And we are back for another episode of the Keith Price's Curtain Call. And I'm so excited because, first of all, it's Juneteenth. Woo! We're so, free! We're free! So, so we are finally free. <laughs> Some two and a half years after being told that we were to- supposed to be free, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. being from Galveston, I'm very excited because my hometown has been a big part of it. But, Absolutely. you know, we're talking about one big concept of a proclamation, shall we say, in terms of a really great landscape moment for Black America. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. today, I'm going to have the opportunity to talk to another <laughs> Free Great. Person. Another another one who is a recipient of what the freedom of Black America can produce when left alone to do what they got to do. Mm-hmm. And did I get you right now? You so I'm so excited yeah, because you. today I'm talking to the artistic director of the Crossroads Theater, which for many, 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 many years has been the home to new works by African-American artists for over 40 years. One of the things, and here's a connection that I I love because Mr. Khan is responsible for us getting to see the works of August Wilson be brought to stage. We've gotten to see uh, some of the great works of, um, oh my God, I'm thinking of the Colored Museum. George Wolf. George Wolf and seeing work, you know, George C. Wolf's work. Actually, the Colored Museum was one of those pieces that I did in college where, you know, we were in one of those, it was a class, Dr. Joni Jones's class, and we were supposed to pick a a character scene and do for the class as our speech thing. And I did (laughs) the world, (laughs) the gospel according to Miss Raj. Raj. (laughs) (laughs) Now. Okay, (laughs) that was my introduction to the Crossroads Theater, not even realizing that I was being introduced to the Crossroads Theater many, many years ago in Texas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, And so mm -hmm. when we talk about the influence of Black theater and the influence of what it can do, you know, Rick Kahn, first of all, good morning and good afternoon and happy Pride and happy uh, Juneteenth. Yes. And thank you. <laughs> That's how we can start it off. Hey. Just a big old thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm here and I'm grateful. And you know, Keith, I love how you said it, it, it's about if we're left alone, all the things we could do, just, just imagine. And you, That's when you, you bring up um, James Brown, you know, open mm-hmm. up the door and I'll get it myself. And I'll get it myself. And, and that's one of the things Crossroads was based on. Now, we didn't just pop up and decide to do that. We, we knew that people who came before, like the African Grove Theater uh, mm-hmm. in the 1800s, they did that. Right. And, they did, and they were doing Shakespeare, right? right. But they were yep. black. Um, the Negro Ensemble Company, Barbara Antier and the National mm-hmm. Black Theater, and Woody King and, and New Federal Theater, the New Lafayette Theater. The, these were arena players in, in, in Baltimore. Folks basically saying, I could do this myself. Yeah. And so we, we, we came along in that path, and I'm grateful that, that we're still on it. Wow. So Rick Kahn, for those of you who are, you know, hopefully get, getting your Google on, <laughs> get your Google on, <laughs> <laughs> are finding out a lot about you, sir. Mm. One of the things that I love as something that I think that we do share, I'm also first-generation American as well. Mm-hmm. My mm-hmm. parents were both from Honduras. Okay. And you came with a much more ethnic mix beyond just the Latin American energy. Am well, actually, yeah, that's right. The, yeah. the Caribbean. Yeah. Uh, my father is from Trinidad. Yes. But Trinidad is very mixed ethnically. And, right. In terms of African and, and Indian and mm-hmm. Amerindian, Chinese. And, right. And in Spanish. And so I grew up on that side with all of that, with the love for for the world. And my mother is from Philadelphia. She's right. straight up African American from Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And they both met at Howard University. So right. what they brought was, yeah, a mix of, of, of a lot of stuff, but most importantly, uh, the ability to raise us as uh, citizens of the world, children of the world. Now, how many siblings do you have? Four. I have four. Four. I have, yes, I have uh, three brothers and one sister. Wow. Now, are they involved in the world of theater like you, or are they all, you, you know, know, my rebellious <laughs> business? <laughs> both, 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 both. My, my, um, my, my, my uh, brother Rashid is, uh, 
is a, 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 a preacher and he, he has raised an amazing family. Uh, my, my brother Amir has also, but he is also an activist in Camden, New Jersey. I mean, a serious activist. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, that's where my father uh, practiced his, his medical uh, uh, business in Camden. For 50 years, right? Wow. And, uh, and we didn't know growing up in Camden how rough it was because you're kids. You don't you don't really notice that. But yeah. uh, but but going back there is is a lot of what what my brother Amir is is trying to do to to, to help out. And um, and my sister Sharina, she's she's uh, uh, raising uh, two children, and my brother Mustafa, who's the youngest. Is a filmmaker from Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, all of these great names, and then Ricardo. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 How did I, that I, happen? I know. I know. Right. <laughs> well, I was the first, and I, I believe, uh, I love Lucy had something to do with that. Ricky. Ah. Uh, right? Okay. Uh, I, I, I used to try to figure out. Okay, my, my mother's from Philly. My father's from Trinidad. So in between, uh, you know, <laughs> is that. What Cuba? You know, I don't. I don't. Well, well I mean, you know, because Trinidad is very close to South America, right? Trinidad, Tobago. It, yeah, yeah. So, you so, so you know, it's yeah. mm -hmm. a little something, something. There's you know. something, something, but I, 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 I don't, I don't honestly know. I, but uh, I was the first, and then after that, I, they, I think they, 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 they went ahead uh, on my father's side, but my mother, on my mother's side, his uh, name was uh, his, uh, my mother's father. First name was Richard, so I think okay. that that's where that came back. And so they tried to blend of, it. Yeah, and <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they were blend. That's exactly what they were doing. But the Arabic, a lot of that comes from my father, who even though he's from Trinidad, right. his origin is India. Right. There's a large, yeah. large population that's there yeah. that I discovered through. A, I had a friend who was a nurse whose family was Indian, I, I thought of as Indian, but then right. I found out that they were raised, their family was raised in, in Trinidad. And so there was a lot of flavor. So when I was talking to roti yeah. to them, they were like, oh yeah, I know what a roti is. A roti. <laughs> it's like, you don't, know, don't come over here with that non-bread <laughs> foolishness. Know, it's true, you know, when, when I was, so I'm returning to Crossroads now, but when I left Crossroads, I left in 99. Right. And I decided I'm going to take a year to live in Trinidad. Uh, and I don't even know what the, my next step's going to be, but I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. And part of why I wanted to go to Trinidad is because the uh, uh, black theater in America, if, if its focus is history and its focus is, is the United States, then we are not just by definition, but it, by every story, victims. Right. Of, what happened to us as Africans in America. And I have always fought against that uh, because that means that, that black, black theater, like black history, is about black people being the victims and white people being the victimizers. And there's gotta be another way. There's gotta right. be a different way into it. And so spending a year in Trinidad was about trying to, to, to live in a society that is from all these different backgrounds. But Keith, when you ask a Trinidadian who is, uh, whose origins are India, or whose origins are Africa, or who are, whose origins are Venezuela, they're going to say, I'm Trinidadian. That's it. They're right? from Trini. Because here, Trini, we, man, that's yeah, it. Cause here, you know, we see each other on the streets and we say, what are you? <laughs> you, you know, and we know exactly what that is. It's like, where are your peoples from? What? But but they they'll say they'll tell you Trinidad. They'll say Trinidad. Now here's something that you know it's a complete side note because I want to make sure that everybody understands that Ricardo Khan over at the Crossroads Theater is getting ready to do something fantastic in terms of merging with um, doing work with the folks of theater in Harlem as well as mm -hmm. with the theater company in South Africa, That's right. bringing all of this new stuff here. But here's something that I think I you know it just you, you know trying to stay current with us. Um, just recently, this past week, uh, in the Heights, the movie just mm -hmm. was released, right? Yeah. And the conversation, you know, for me was, I was so excited to see this piece come up. Mm -hmm. I was thrilled. Mm -hmm. I watched it and I loved every minute of it. I thought it was wonderful. I ate up every piece of mafungo I could find. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I got all up in my feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And 
later on the, the, the week, there was a, a moment when they had a, a the, Rita Moreno was being asked about the, oh, the film. Mm -hmm. And there was a conversation that was brought up about how there were no black Latino characters in the the. I guess in the immediate the main, past, yeah, in the main, you know, it's but there was there's the Benny the Car Man who mm -hmm. is black, mm -hmm. African American, but he's not black Latino, mm -hmm. you know. But within the mix, and and I when I sat there, I was so stunned because I sat through that entire movie, mm -hmm. and it never dawned on me to look at it that way because I am also, you know, my parents are both from they were both from Honduras. Mm -hmm. So that makes me first generation black Latino, if that's what the question is. And it didn't dawn on me to look at it as there was no black Latinos there. I saw enough Latino energy mm -hmm. to not have that be a concern because I think of myself as Latino as just mm -hmm. Latino. Mm -hmm. The fact that there were any black that looked like me Latinos didn't mm -hmm. change one iota of that story and i was really wondering you know with that level of representation do you mm -hmm. you know here you are now with this what you're doing with the crossroads and bringing all of this other energy mm -hmm. as a, a just a black person do you feel just as connected to the folks of harlem as you feel to the black people of you know africa south africa to the place where if you created a role or a position where you had a black person and you put someone from south africa in it versus mm -hmm. putting someone from harlem in it or vice mm -hmm. versa mm -hmm. you know that level of controversy it, it's sort of like well we're all black mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we're all people we're all human we're all into this mix yes mm -hmm. we are also latino but i mean the idea that everybody was you know you know up in arms and i i just was wondering like how does that representation question thing affect the stuff that you do and the stuff that you put forward and how conscious of it are you it does not um it does not define me as a person or as an artist so it doesn't uh it, it doesn't uh narrow what i see but what it does do is bring a focus to an issue we have as black people in this country which is right. that we're still trying to figure it out. Right. All of this stuff is about trying to figure it out. And, uh, and, and you know, coming from a different, you know, from uh, not you particularly from a different country, but if you are, are in a different country, you're going to come across people who are going to come to you and say, Keith, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. What are you now? Are you black? Are you colored? Are you Afro-American? Are you African-American? Are you, are you, uh, you know, and, and we're Negro, are, you know, red bone, mm -hmm. you know, red mine, you know, we're still going through it, Keith. We're still a work in progress. Right. Uh, uh, and, and it's because so much was taken away from us at one point. So, so I think what we're questioning now, we absolutely need to question. Right. But does it, but does that which we question uh, become wrong because of it? No. No, yeah. it, it, it does not. We, we, we are still working. Let's not be as hard on each other you know, right. as, as, as uh, our um, slave masters were on us. <laughs> and you know what's so funny? As I listened to the controversy as it was unfolding, I kept thinking to myself, it's like, you know, this is the first time I think since West Side Story <laughs> have mm -hmm. we even seen like any kind of Latin American energy on the big screen like this with yeah. music and dance and mm -hmm. a true representation and a true celebration of the the, the culture and, and in it's the, like in the room that manages yes because we didn't do that in west side story right but we right. are doing it here yeah. and we're doing it here mm -hmm. and it's just a shame that you know <laughs> that that was something that got flagged by someone and i and i can't for the life of me understand like, you know, when will it be enough? It's like, because that's just one project. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's the first of hopefully many projects where we're going to be able to now, like, now that we can explain to people that there are different kinds of Latin folks mm -hmm. <laughs> that look all different kinds of ways, mm -hmm. because now somebody got mad. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, I mean, we have, no, you know, Keith. We've get, known it all we, this time. We've known it all this time, but we also are hard on ourselves. We, we said, well, Keith, you know, you're not, you're not Latin. What do you mean? What do you say? You <laughs> black. You mean? You're not Latin. You black. You black. I mean, you, you know, know. And until my last name changes, they don't see the difference. They don't see.
but they don't see the they don't see the difference not because of ignorance but because we were taught something else, we taught something uh, else. so so when it comes to crossroads and what it is i'm trying to do at crossroads i'm trying to teach something else in our work that we are we are we are world people right we're world people so let's define ourselves that way don't be like this yeah. go out go to other countries and when you go to un other countries, don't try to find the McDonald's and the Popeyes. Go into the neighborhoods, <laughs> right? And if they have McDonald's and Popeyes in the neighborhood, that's different. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm saying. I mean, you know, also to depending on what your traveling funds. Are, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Get to know. <laughs> get to know the people you connect with. One of the, so the so the brother we're working with on emergency, for example, Daniel. Right. Oh, a baby right now and, and before we move forward there's yeah, yeah, an yeah. entire new season because we are now yeah. coming out of the covid craziness mm -hmm. that the crossroads theater is going to have a friend they've a brand new slate of new pieces and new works that are coming out yeah, yeah. crossroadstheater.org to get mm -hmm. all your information now go ahead i just want to make sure i plugged you <laughs> yeah no no thank you for that keith um the uh the, the one of the gentlemen who is part of our season, uh, Daniel uh, Koa Beatty actually has lived in Accra for uh, a, a good portion of these last 14 months. And it, he's from New York originally, but he found a part of his roots that caused him to go there and find he was a prince. And it, it, it's, it's when you go, when you discover things about yourself, it's because you've stepped onto a journey that you will never come back the same. Right. But, you know, on, and, and, and he, he has done that. And I'm really, really looking forward to working with him just as I'm looking forward to working with uh, the young, um, young women from South Africa who are bringing a show with right. us because we learn. Bonganian Gamer, who wrote uh, and directed Serafina, now wow. he was he was a, a, a an associate artist at Crossroads. Crossroads was his artistic home for 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 a long time, and you had mentioned George Wolfe. He was an artistic uh, associate at Crossroads. So was Anna Devere Smith. So was Antezaki Shange. Uh, so was uh, Avery Brooks and, uh, and 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 Denise Nicholas. And and the one thing that all of these folks have in common is their sense of themselves as bigger than what America would, would want you to be defined as. It's right. bigger, it's it's bigger, you know? And and I, I think that's why the market theater becomes so important to us. That's why Trinidad and and, and the Trinidad Theater Workshop and, and folks, in, you know, artists, uh, black artists from all over the country who live in the UK and, 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 and other places other than here are people who need to be in the dialogue too. We're at the right. center of it. And what we're trying to define is a better sense of who we are as African-Americans. That's the work we're doing. But right. it involves everybody because we're part of everybody. Right. Okay, so let me tell you about the season. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you teed it up and I went somewhere else. Okay. No, so, that's why we can do whatever we want. That's why I love <laughs> okay. this. All right, I, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. So what we, what Crossroads is known for is always working out of its own building and being its own entity, right? Uh, in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And we were part of the New Brunswick Cultural Center, but it was our own building. That building and the one next door to it, George C. Playhouse, were knocked down in order to build a big performing arts center. Right. So the reaction I had to that was, this is beautiful, and it is. The, the center is absolutely gorgeous. But the challenge is identity. Where are we? Which yeah. crossroads, right? And so we've been working with them, and they've been wonderful with us, to try to get to get that back for Crossroads. And right. what they decided to do was allow us. So we're doing our shows now in festivals. So rather than a show every other month throughout the mm -hmm. year, I'm taking the shows that we would normally do in the fall and putting them together and simultaneously running them in the center. So if you walk wow. into Crossroads, yeah. If you walk into the Performing Arts Center, there, there are two theaters. One You'll see one show, one you'll see another show. You could go upstairs to the, to the um, community room 
uh, the, the rehearsal hall, and there'll be a different community reading every night. And then we're going to have a bookstore in the lobby. We're going to sell wow. retail in the lobby. We're going to have our food, our music, all of this before we even get to the shows. So when people are in there, it's like a marketplace. And then it's time to go see the shows, and everybody goes different places. And then they come back. So the wow. first show, for example, uh, is a show that I felt was necessary because we're coming out of COVID. And we're, we're, we need, we all need to emerge, but we need help emerging, re-emerging, right. right? Because, you know, we want to get back in the theater. We want to get back with people. We want to get back to music and the arts and theater. And so I talked to Sweet Honey and the Rock, the, 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 the music. Yes, I yes. I said, would you help me do this? And they said, yes. So the play is called When Day Comes. And it mm -hmm. features Sweet Honey and the Rock. And the goal is to try to move us to the light, move us right. to the day, help help us do that. And Amanda Gorman, uh, the um, the young uh, poet laureate who did her poem at the inauguration. Declaration, yes. Well, the, the hill we climb. The, her first lyrics are "When Day Comes." So that's that's what it is. And 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 I'm saying to you, I am expecting day to come in September. For wow. And then the other show we're doing is what I talked about, Daniel Koa Beatty, it's called Emergency. Mm -hmm. And in Emergency, he plays maybe 60 different characters all himself. He's a spoken word artist. And I think every young person should come out to, to see that and be part of who he is. This is about, uh, in the Hudson River, a ghost slave ship rising. Wow. Today. Today. Ooh. And, and you ask yourself, Oof. what would our ancestors say if they saw what's going on today? What would they say? How would that affect us? So mm. it, it's very much a contemporary piece. And, uh, and then, then we're, doing, we're doing free shows for young people, for children and their families. It's called Free Family Saturdays. And that's kicking off with Divinity Rocks. And that's on Saturday morning. So, I mean, and then there, then there are others that will take us all around the world. So... It's going to be a really exciting fall, and then we're going to come back in the spring, in June, with the world premiere of Freedom Rider, which yes. celebrates Freedom Riders of 1961, and, uh, and then the other, as I was telling you, is called Text Me When You Arrive, which is the South African. African one. That That's day. the with the, the women, I forgot the description, oh. it was like, the description when I read it, I was like, oh, okay, so... This is going to be very, very interesting. It's like after the description and it's like, but it's supposed to be a comedy. And I was like, oh, you know, it's wild. It's true. The, it's going the, to be the, way they, the way these women tackle the issue of date rape. Right. Yeah. Today, uh, is, is, it's not like this graphic thing where it's this is what happened to me. It's coming at it a different way that you'd appreciate like yeah. their own, from their own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Right coming on to say, okay, now we're going to give you suggestions on this particular thing, what to do. All right. Rule wow. number one. Right. Um, and they'll say something like, don't dress a certain way when you go out. But what they really mean is why not? Why not? Right. Why and not? So it gets to the issue, but it gets to it in a way that makes it uh, accessible as a conversation that we all need to have. Versus it being some didactic, you know, right. this is what you have to do. This is how you save yourself. You <laughs> right. you know? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. And they but, have fun with it. They have fun with it. So I'm excited as, about that. But, but it's not as, as you know, um, I want to say folklorical as when your mama used to tell you, don't leave your drink uncovered. Don't, don't walk away. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, make sure your I friends know. know where you're going when you leave the house. You it know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's wild. I was, I was directing a show once out in, in um, Kansas City, yeah. which is where I, I started developing Freedom Rider. And all of a sudden, the kids, uh, because this is a university, they just felt different. They... they we're thinking differently. And I asked them, well, wh why is this different than, than the days of Freedom Rider? Why are you, where's your head at? Because this is supposed to show you, not in a didactic way, that you can do it too. That, that there are times in history when huge things have happened because of young people. Right. And they said, well, Rick, in your day, 
you had signs up on your classrooms that said, in case, um, in case somebody is choking, this is how you, this is the maneuver you do, right? Today, it's in the event of a, a, a shooter. So, so the psyche that we're putting them into as young people is not to be dismissed. We have to address it. And, and uh, I mean, first of all, we need to get rid of the guns. That's, that's for sure, right? Ugh. I mean, we're not going to be, you talk about um, Juneteenth, but the reality is that no one is free until we're all free. So we're, we're not free. free. We're not free because the, the Union Army told us we're free. Right. Uh, we're not free until we can get young people to feel free, to dream again, to to walk again, to to, to not worry about what is put into your uh, your glass when you move away. Right. Right. Well, you know, that's that sounds like in a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. You look back. That's in, true. In the utopia right. upon which I want to be. <laughs> Here we go. And then it's like, oh, okay, Uncle Keith, you're telling us back in your day. <laughs> Back in your day, <laughs> our cup. We don't drink drinks we're like that at no more, Uncle Keith. <laughs> we know. drink drinks through tubes. Through tubes, you know. <laughs> With oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what's so funny, though? It's like, I always think about how the times have changed dramatically and how the things that we did allow and, and, and make allowances for, there's no room for that anymore. And do you see like with theater in terms of when you started with Crossroads versus the things that are being presented in theater day, like as we go from that to, you know, seeing things like a, In the Heights and then, the, you know, Hamilton and seeing that kind of hard celebration, like, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of, of of identity being celebrated and, and brought to the stage in a way, like, do you see any differences between what it was like then and versus what you're seeing now? Well, I think it was, uh, it, it was perhaps more innocent in terms of how we approached art right. back then, because back then it was, I mean, probably for you as well, you know, you get bit by the bug, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, it doesn't matter what the play is. You just want to be in it. You just want to be you in it. You just want to be on that stage. It's the smell of the grease paint, right? And yeah. The, of the crowd. And, uh, and, and that's what I remember feeling. In fact, when I was growing up, theater and being in theater kind of saved me from having to deal with what was going on outside, which was the right. Vietnam War and, and, and all these other things that were going on and, and, and racism and, 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 and all of that, that was my initial entree into theater. And it was that innocence. But, but it, when I got to college, I started to realize the bigger world and, and the importance of Pan-Africanism and the importance uh, and how theater can work, not just as, as an art form, but as a tool to change the world. And yeah. so that is, you know, that is where I think those types of theaters that I mentioned earlier, any Inigo Ensemble and, 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 and New Federal and Antizaki mm -hmm. Shange and Ed Bullens and people like that, they were, Ron Milner, they were about wanting to change the world and they did it with their work. I think right. where we are now is reminding ourselves that this is what theater can do. This is what music can do. It's not just about how much money you make. Right. Right. Yeah, because between then and now, black folks are start are, are making some money now. Yeah, right. They weren't before. They weren't allowed in Hollywood before. Or they weren't accepted in Hollywood before. Uh, you know, um, we didn't have managers of basketball teams who were black any. You know, and now we do. So I mean, there there's opportunity. There's all of this. People are moving to other things. I am hoping we are also recognizing the need to come back to community, to come back to our, our, uh, our issues and use our art uh, in a way that can still be innocent in terms of the beauty of the art and the form, but use it to change the world. Use it to make a difference so that our children um, are able to inherit a, uh, a world better than the one we inherited. We right. could do that with theater. We could we could do that with theater because we're bringing, unlike any other art form, we bring 
all kinds of people together yes into one room to see one one piece of work and they can all respond differently if they want they could take whatever they want you know i was watching an interview you were doing key oh no <laughs> and you could sit no you were you were talking about um how you don't see yourself as a critic but an ambassador right yeah and i'm thinking you know that's exactly what it is we are all we're ambassadors and we use yeah. our work to 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 bring worlds together that's by the way where we get our name crossroads right wow so, well rick this that's a perfect place for us to give it a wrap so that we can okay. have other things to look forward to because you know i want to talk to you more later on in the year when we get closer and closer to the opening of the season yeah, yeah. and maybe get together with some of the playwrights and some of the folks that are doing oh, the new works because that's that's something that needs to happen too because again you know, whatever Cosmo that I have that's available as a platform for people to find out about it, there's a lot of different people amongst that strata. And so, you know, the idea that I, I could help facilitate that is just really wonderful. So I love that. I'm looking I th forward to I that. Thank you. I, and I'm thanking you on behalf of Crossroads, but also on behalf of our partners like uh, the Market Theater in Johannesburg and yes. in Harlem, uh, new, uh, Voza Rivers New Heritage theater uh, yes that beautiful know, space it's we're gonna we're going to we're gonna kick some butt because Let's, we're we're black institutions coming together to do stuff and and i want i want to do it with black institutions across the country as well and it doesn't mean that i don't like working with my white brothers and sisters because i love right. that too this right. is a, a different meaning though yeah That's and the thing That's is is that and you know as broadway itself is planning its resurgence come mm -hmm. October, September, October. Mm -hmm. that, that you know, theaters like you know, you've you've been working with this theater space for as long as you have, and it's like even in the down times for you, you were planning things for when the, we were when we all be free. <laughs> When day comes, <laughs> when the you know, when day comes, when we can be mask free and theater free, you know, it's like, it's like <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, so yeah. you're preparing for that mm -hmm. with the same kind of fervor and the same kind of excitement and the same kind of of wonder awe. and and mm -hmm. and awe mm -hmm. as you know anybody opening anything on Broadway. So, yes, yes. and that shouldn't be diminished and that should also be respected. And so I hope that people who are listening will go to the cross the crossroads theater.org and find out more about what's going on. Mm -hmm. If at some point in time now that people are getting vaccinated and feeling safer about traveling and feeling safer about, you know, reaching out and getting out to see things, that this is the perfect opportunity to start doing that because again, the world of theater is probably one of the safer places that I think I want to be. Yeah, we make it's sure like, it's safe. You know, I love a comedy club. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, but, but I, you know, they don't have no unions up in the comedy club making sure everybody got disease, COVID tests, and I stuff like that, know. which I know will happen in the theater. But so I think, I think we're 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 a special place, theater, yeah. because we 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 do try to make it safe for all people. Doesn't matter what your color is, you know. Doesn't doesn't matter your your, your any persuasion or sweat, right just, right. You just you're, show up. <laughs> Not just welcome here, all right. Right. Everybody's welcome, but to be able to come as yourself and feel free and and feel safe, you're also celebrated. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 you're, you're absolutely right. Theater, theater has that special uh, ability to do that. And we're looking forward to and, and when people visit Crossroads during the festivals, you can catch three shows of our shows in two days. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. for the, you know, especially for the people that like to do theater runs, as they used to say. Yes, yes. The day. It's like you're getting a whole bazaar, you're getting a festival, you are, you're getting a place to you drop are. your kids off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so true. Should, should you put, the, put that on a boat, honey. That's a whole cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you got a theater cruise, honey. The Crossroads Theater <laughs> Organization's cruise. They got one for Playbill, so why you can't, why can't you have one? Why not? You door. know, we we did online. Why not do on the water cruise? On, hello. Like that. I'm like just that. saying, you know, right, when, when things Hon get things get back to normal, we don't go down. <laughs> we don't go to Honduras. When things that would be one back to normal. That would be cool. Go see Rotan and get on some of those beaches. That would be fabulous. Ooh, man. 
I'm just Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Just saying. Well, Mr. Khan, yeah. Ricardo Khan, hey, man. thank you so much. <laughs> and you. I hope that folks that are listening are going to take the time to go and check out everything that's going on at the crossroads theater.org and get ready because theater's coming back and she ain't playing. Boom. And we'll be back.